This podcast is a part of the Royal Wee Network. Spit on me. There's no heat. I, I, I haven't wor- I've been working on my Trump, but the only thing I know I can say is it's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. <laughs> huge. Yeah. I got the best heat. All the best heat. I can heat everything up. Huge. Now all I can say is huge. That's good. That's all right. Yeah. So, the other day when Tim came home, not the other day, it was a while ago, mm-hmm. back when it was hot. Yeah. She came home with a trophy and it had a Pokeball on it. Oh, yeah. Remember? And we're like, what the hell? Where did you like find this trophy? Pokemon ball. And she went to this store and bought a trophy for like $10, like a custom printed trophy. Uh-huh. And it was a piece of shit. It was like, it weighed, <laughs> it weighed like a... A, a fifth yeah. of a pound. Like, Even the base, like the base, because I've gotten, you know, crappy trophies before, but at least the base is substantial to like hold it there. Now this, this was just the whole, all the way down was just plastic. But if you put it on a shelf, if no one picked it up, it yeah. looked like a trophy. Yeah, from a, di- from a distance, like it looks substantial. But I see this here, and then, now this is my favorite place to look for stuff now. The worst things for sale dot com. People, uh-huh. go to the website, support them, give this guy clicks, because... Is it just one guy? It, it's a blog. Okay, okay. He's put out two new things since last time we talked about it. Okay. So I'll give you an insight. It's two days since <laughs> yeah. last time we talked about this. Uh-huh. Is that true? Yeah. 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 So apparently there are trophies you can get that are just, it's, no, well, let me, let me finish my thought first. Okay. <laughs> it would be funny to just give people, because that's cheap, right? Yeah. And the more you order, the cheaper they get. Well, yeah, like I stumbled on that. Yeah, I stumbled on that Chinese website because I was looking for guitars or like acoustic basses. Oh, right, you had to order everything in bulk. Yeah, I had to order like five hundred of them. Right. <laughs> I was like, man, that's a steal. I was like, oh. But my, my point is, you could give people get like just fake trophies for things like best dick. Yeah. You know, or like, you know, like <laughs> num- number one cabbage eater. Yeah, guy, he, he nails it. So you just give that to someone as a gift, or, or leave it in their house. Yeah, and be like, hey, did I leave my best dick trophy over there? <laughs> <laughs> that, oh. That'd be a great phone call. Like, yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My wife's asking questions. All right. <laughs> ten, year, ten year runner. Ten year runner. <laughs> ten, ten, yeah. What's that? Voted <laughs> best dick ten years in a row. That would be a great trophy. It just says voted best. <laughs> just best? Just best. I think my buddies had a shirt one time that just said voted voted best. It should be like consumer reports best rated for safety or something. Yeah. Well, what was funny is voted best for what is just so vague. Voted best. Voted best. The end. But, well, the reason I'm thinking that'd be, about... That'd be great for just birthdays. Just give, yeah. Yeah. Somebody once had this idea that it'd be a good idea to give away cuckoo clocks every Christmas. And I was like, that would be a good idea to give everybody a cuckoo clock one year. But if you start year after year being like, God damn it, they're giving us more cuckoo clocks. Like, how many? No one needs more than one cuckoo clock. No. So if you start giving them every year at Christmas time, that's when my ex-wife had this idea. She's like, we'll just give them to everybody in the family, and every year it's like we have Christmas taken care of. We just give them cuckoo clocks every year. It's like you're a goddamn cuckoo clock. (laughs) That's like there's. uh, uh, that's not going to fly. If every year I got a cuckoo clock for For the the same person, I'd be like, oh god, you know that there's no way. It's been six years running. You know what I mean? Like you wouldn't put it up. With, you wouldn't put it up for it for two. If that, if, <laughs> what, you, what you can't? You're going to refuse the gift. You're going to say, you're man, gonna you be... gave me, I'm not, "What am I going to put? I don't have a house big enough for two cuckoo clocks." Two? You got six now. But you're, you're I'm not going to wait. You know, I'm not going to wait till six. They're showing up at Christmas dinner and they got that one box, and you're like, "God damn it! I know it's. I'm going to open it. It's a cuckoo. But she's like, "But they'll be all. They'll all be different." I'm like, "Still, can you imagine if we had?" A cuckoo clock in every room. People Imagine if we had a cuckoo clock in this house. <laughs> this is a small house. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an apartment building. Mm-hmm. A house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's what? It's three rooms and a kitchen. Yeah, yeah. If we put a cuckoo clock in this living room, well, no, it's kind of two. It's kind of, it's kind of like one, two, three, four rooms in a kitchen and a bathroom. Sure, sure. You okay. have to have a cuckoo clock in the bathroom. We're going to put a cuckoo clock in the bathroom. We're going to put a cuckoo clock in here, each of our ba- bedrooms. So on every goddamn hour, the whole oh, house... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what'd be funny? That's the gift. <laughs> That's the thing. What? Custom Joey clocks. That sound like Joey's super cool. Or just cool different things. Yeah. Like this one's... This one's 
I got real into YouTube eaters. Guys, I need... Oh, my God. Guys, look this up. This guy's called... You're, you're going to love it. Look up food use on YouTube. <laughs> we'll link it if we remember, which we don't always remember, but we'll try. Oh, just the ones with Big Papa are the best. Look ones. up food use. I'll try to link this. This guy, Big Papa. It's this, this one guy who's trying his hardest to be a real food review. like He's, he's like, all right, guys. We're here. We're trying Wendy's new heart attack sandwich, whatever it is. You know, hey, we're here to do this. And, and, and he's like, you know. Ah, ah. He's and trying, but it, it, he... It's like he brought his... It's like, These guys are like in their late 30s. Yeah. Right? And th- he's trying for the camera. The other guy is oblivious to the fact... He's just <laughs> eating Wendy's. He doesn't even know. I don't even think he knows the wrong... It, you can clearly tell he doesn't get it. That he doesn't understand this guy's trying to make a food video review the, vi- the food. Like they get in the car and the guy, one guy goes through the whole the motions of being like, hey, I'm going to... Showing the camera what he's Yeah, eating. he's like showing it and he's like starts talking to the other guy just... Before this other guy can quit talking about getting it out of the bag, this guy's already digging in and he eats just like... Oh, oh, oh. So this guy just starts smacking away and the guy's like, okay, I've got the... We're, we're sitting here watching this and Wanting is trying to like count money or do some sort of responsible adult thing. Yeah. And she looked up at what we were watching on the TV and he goes, you guys are just watching two fat people she, eat? And she was real sad about it. She and had she, a real sad face. She went, you just watch fat people eat. And just walked out and of the And just house. walked out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just watch fat people eat. But my point was, so the reason I brought this up was because on this website... They, well, there's a couple things here, but you can get a trophy that says world champion and look what the trophy looks like. I want you to paint a word picture for our audience. That's your job now. Okay. Paint, word, paint, paint. word pictures. Oh my God. Well, that's just the penis. It's a gold plated. <sighs> it's about the size of a can. <laughs> yeah. It's as fat as it is wide. I, so I can't tell. Is it supposed to be a wreck it or is it world champion? And, world champion chode. And it has, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chode is the proper word for that type of a penis. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. A chode is a dick that is... Now, I've heard it described as a way that is impossible. <laughs> but I've heard a chode is a dick that is wider than it is long. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> like, it hit a wall real fast? Like, like a can of tuna. <laughs> <laughs> that's not possible. I Imagine don't... that surprise if you got some guy home from the bar and you were like... <laughs> Holy shit. That's like the guy, the blob. <laughs> yeah, the blob. We were watching the video of this guy. I think we talked about this, maybe. This guy who was injecting silicone into his dick. Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. It was awful. <laughs> and then it's got like a, uh, you know, a Yankee Doodle Dandy fucking and it just says bow world, ribbon tied around it. just says world it. champion. Tie a yellow ribbon now, around old gold yeah, that chode. Do for you. you got this world champion too. Is that a pair of tits? It's just a pair of tits, but they look like those party are, balloons. Those are awful. Because the nipple's on top. I think that, is that not, is that supposed to be part? Nope, it says boobs trophy. Stag party hen night, girls out. <laughs> yeah, that's the name of the Amazon <laughs> place. Stag say. party hen, not, hen's night out. Okay. Material's made of plastic, but it looks like, they don't, don't, they don't look like, that doesn't look like a set of breasts at you all. Know the, the point is, is straight up. Little Nicky? Yeah. When he's got them on his head? Yeah. That's kind of, yeah. Kevin Nealon has tits on his head? It's even worse than that, though. But once again, they're, 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 does that have a Yankle Doodle Danny? It really looks like an ass with nipples on the top. Yeah. I mean, it's like, more like it a, is in the back. It, it, it looks, looks like more, an ass yeah, with nipples on the It looks more there. like an ass. The, the cleavage is... It's like the breasts have started from the same point in the center of the chest and are... <laughs> that's off-putting. On the top, it looks... It's just odd. But here in, again... Is an opportunity for you to paint a word picture. Okay. In in in, what is that called? I don't know. What is that called? No. Well, give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> you asked me questions. I stumbled for a moment, and you're like, I don't hey, know. Hey, don't throw me here. I'm putting cuckoo clocks in the bathroom. <laughs> that would be funny if you had one, and it was right in front of because our bathroom's kind of small, and it was mounted low. So while you're in there like taking a burl. You've got to look at this cuckoo clock and be like, do you think it's... And then the hour comes, it's like... <laughs> and it just blasts you right in the face. Inches from your face. Of, or if you're taking a piss, it just pokes you in the ass. <laughs> yeah. So this is... Better get it right. I'm just going to read the title okay. before you see it. Okay. It's called Dittoy. Oh, this was in, in People Purchase. What is that at the bottom? It says people, people who bought this also bought. Oh, yeah. So this was part yeah. of that. It's Dittoy... Resin, sexy handicraft decoration, statues, crazy banana, size three. 
Okay. Uh, can I even guess before I even see it? Yeah, please. Is it a thing to make a mold of your penis? It's not. No. Okay. No. 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 I want you to guess again. I'm going to say it again. Okay. Ditoy. 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 Resin. So Ditoy resin, I think, goes together. Okay. Sexy handicraft decoration. Statues. Crazy banana. Size three. Is it like a three inch penis made of Ditoy resin? What's the? Uh, I have no clue. Ready to what, I have no idea what that is. Oh my god! <laughs> in a in a in a million years, I would, okay. It's what appears to be two sentient humanoid banana men, people, <laughs> and they're doing the fucking flying V. Okay, the, Is that called the, the flying V? I don't know what that's called. It's, it, it's, it's like you know in that sometimes in, in like a, it's like a, a wheelbarrow spirit spirit rallies. Yeah, Is that pep rallies. Pep rallies. I'm like pep right. rally. Yeah, like class spirit. Uh-huh. You know that game where one person has you by the feet and you run. And the other yeah, it's wheel, your wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow or something. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, he's that's what it is. It's the Except he's, I don't think he's wheelbarrow. He's he's laying plow. But these, why are they okay? It's there's a banana, a, possibly a female. But what's? Oh my god! I'm trying to figure out how to start. They have ar- human arms, but they end in like sleeves. And he's wearing a no. He's wearing a watch. It looks like. Yeah, so they have like human arms he that end in sleeves, and also the the banana peel is peeled back at the bottom, so their <laughs> so their legs, so their legs are coming out from the bottom of the peel, but their face is merged with the peel, so it's not like a, a cut out hole like there are people in these suits. It's like they're banana people that have sprouted arms and legs. You know what's so funny? There's no one who would you'd click that and you go hmm, and you'd stop looking at it. No, like. We've yeah. talked about it more than it's worth. I would love to have that. I want. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Where would you put that? Right next to this sex lamp. Oh, we have a sex lamp. Yeah, came to the house. It's just a woman, like she's holding up the lamp part. It's just like a nude woman, like in like a curled backwards in like some kind of yoga position, like a yoga move. Yeah, she's kicking yeah. herself in the head. <laughs> so look at features. Would you like to hear the features of this banana statue? Yeah, this statue is made by Chinese craftsmanship, perfect for your home and bedroom decoration. Material. Is material by high grade resin materials, no harm or any toxic. This toy will increase your sex feeling when with your lover. <laughs> will it? This will do the opposite. No, you'd be like, why is this weird? I don't have that. On. If you're you're fucking going to town on someone and then you look at next to their their bed and they have that, you'd be like, no, do you say let's do that? Yeah, that's just advertising. No, if they you see them looking at it, you're like, oh yeah, I won that once, and then just keep going. <laughs> Increase your sex atmosphere on the night with the article beside your bed. Yep. Oh, good choice for your Christmas, Halloween, birthday, adult ceremony forever. It's adult ceremony. No, no, adult ceremony forever is all together. Okay. It's... <laughs> These are oh, the is holidays. that sex? Is this that is... the translation for sex is your adult ceremony? <laughs> adult ceremony forever. Yeah. Adult Ceremony Forever is one item in this list. <laughs> it says Christmas. Uh huh. It's a good choice for Christmas. Check. Halloween. Check. Check. Birthday, of course. And Adult Ceremony Forever. Yeah. Adult Ceremony Forever. You always worry what to get someone for their Adult Ceremony Forever. Yeah. Don't worry anymore. Get them a weird statue of bananas having strange sex what's funny is if you kept that in a drawer on the nightstand and then that's the kind of thing you find in someone's house who is a hoarder yeah or if you found that somewhere you'd be like why that's the kind of thing you find when you move and it gets thrown away you know what i mean <laughs> well that's what one team tried to do with the sex lamp yeah we they wouldn't let her throw the sex lamp to throw away. that away she's like i don't want that thing we're like yes while well, you're gone i'm gonna find a light bulb for the sex lamp okay it's got a very unsafe looking plug. When you get back, man, we can celebrate your adult ceremony forever with the sex lamp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the plug looks like it looks like Radio Shack. It looks like seventies Radio Shack. Uh huh. It's what this plug looks like. So package includes one funny statue. That's what it says. And I think at first of all it'd be great to just give someone whose whose dick you maybe have never seen or anything, just a statue that's like world champion in the shape of a dick. Uh huh. Right, or even just a regular statue that just says "world champion" or just "nice dick" or something like. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna click this website. I'm gonna say 
I'm going to go to the next page. I'm going to add another random number to the URL. So I'm going to add, it's page, give me a number, one thing, between 1 and 293. 293. Okay, th you're very <laughs> random, thank you. Okay, uh, here's a book called Birth Control is Sinful in Christian Marriages and Also Robbing God of Priesthood Children. What? That's the title? It's the name. That's the name of the, yeah. Okay. That's, this guy has a specific, on page 293 is on a specific thing. Here's another, it's just, it's a book called Experience Heaven. A Little Boy's Amazing Story of His Trip to Heaven and Back. And the title of the blog post is, Kids Are Full of Shit. Wasn't that a real thing? Wasn't he on like Good Morning America and stuff saying that he died and went and saw heaven? Was he? I think. I had no idea. And then it, uh, th I may be making this part up, but it turned out it was a hoax. <laughs> I mean, right. But that he... That his parents, like, put him up to it or something? I don't know. I didn't click anything about it. You know, when there's, like, a political thing that they kind of want to get everyone on board? Or maybe... I, I don't know exactly the purpose of this. I'm going to use a word maybe it's not appropriate. But they try to indoctrinate kids into thinking something is normal. Mm -hmm. Whether it's normal or not, I don't really have any opinion on this. Uh -huh. Let me tell you what it is. It's a children's coloring book called My Parents Open Carry. An open huh. carry adventure. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is whatever. Yeah. Okay. But it's an odd thing for a child to have and color and... Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. That's one of those things like... Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm with you. Like, I don't, I don't care either way. But that's definitely one of the things that the parents are trying to, like, instill that. You know what I mean? Why you would know? you want... I mean, like, how... Why would you, like... First of all, clearly they all do open carry. Why do they need a coloring book to, like... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, oh, my parents, my parents drive a stick shift, and I have a coloring book that proves it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, because some people, because some people on that, you know, that's one of those topics that people feel can get really strongly for or against. Yeah. So, it it that's where it turns into that is because you have people who are like so for it or so against it that. You know, they've got the bumper stickers and giving their kids coloring books and we should to instill it in such a first of all, we say add this to the pile of things we'll never do. But we should make royal we coloring books. Not royal we coloring books, just <laughs> innocuous coloring books. Like <laughs> Or imagine a imagine a children's book, just a urinal. It's a story it's just a urinal and every page is the same background, you just bring different people with piss in the urinal. <laughs> Yeah, that's not really a children's book, I guess. But. I know. Uh, yeah, and the whole thing is about it's the happiest urinal ever because it happens to have a pee fetish. I bet you, if you just we just draw it in a coloring book way, <laughs> and we just do whatever nonsense we want, is there? There's got to be a market out there for funny coloring books. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> just insanity. I like those things if you see where people they take a like an existing coloring book and then they add to it. Yeah, yeah. They make it ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I got really angry at my little brother one time because he colored in my Gary Larson. Oh, color. Like he thought it was a coloring book because uh -huh. it was just a collection of his comics that were just <laughs> black and white. Right. So it was like, hmm, and he colored them all in, and I was like, <laughs> I mean, he didn't really ruin it because, yeah, he did a good job coloring it. <laughs> And he was so little, he was like, well, well then what is it? <laughs> yeah. What could it be if not a coloring book, Sam? <laughs> it was cartoons that weren't in color. Yeah. Yeah. Checkmate. <laughs> Here's something by Jelly Belly called Sport Beans. Sport Beans. Uh, can I guess? Yeah. They have electrolytes in them. It's that... carbs, electrolytes, vitamins B and C. Sport Beans. When do the vitamins end? At the worst time. What I mean... <laughs> That's why you always gotta have sport beans. <laughs> no, no, it's that, I don't mean time. I mean, oh. I mean, like, is there a vitamin N? Oh, I know. I didn't. I know. I didn't give you anything. <laughs> don't you mean like when do you need to take those? When do you run out of vitamins? Is there a vitamin N? Is there a vitamin Q? There's a vitamin D. There's a vitamin K. There's an E. 
Special K? Special. But there's not a vitamin F. I don't think. Vitamin F. Get it in you. Vitamin in. fun. That's a thing. Yeah. Daily dose of vitamin F. I don't know what this is. But it's called Ruby Breast Nuts Porn Songs. What? Some titles. It's an album. Some of the some of the titles in this album. <laughs> is it by Ruby Breast Nut? Ruby Breast Nuts. Her first album. <laughs> okay. It's called Porn Flush. Would you like there, to hear the tracks? Is there a sample? Yes. Okay, well, let's let's read the tracks first. Well, okay, I'm going to read that we can only listen to one. Okay. And I will play it in its entirety because I don't think Ruby Breastnut is going to come after us. <laughs> <laughs> don't say her name anymore. She might appear. <laughs> you summon Ruby Breastnut? Okay. That sounds like an accident. Track one. Stick it in. Okay. Okay, well, I'd see exactly where this is going. Track two, the titular song, Porn Flush. That's what the... Track three is, Wanna Suck Off? <laughs> or question mark. Wanna Suck Off. Track four is, Come On Me. These are just vulgar. Track five is, Hustler Me. What? Track six is, My Holes. <laughs> My lovely lady holes. <laughs> Number, and then it goes from it goes from my holes. No, excuse me, <laughs> my, not my holes. My three holes, more specifically. Oh, my three holes. The three hole patrol. And then number seven is do me right. Is eight do me wrong? Eight is spank your monkey. Oh God. Nine is lucky sixty nine. Then ten is just fuck me, fuck me. Just running out. I mean, we get it. Eleven is pink do, pussy do you, trot, and twelve is just everywhere. Everywhere. The name of twelve is just everywhere. My vote. Okay, now there's two of these that have a bar that is full next to them. <laughs> Come on me and fuck me, fuck me. I have a full bar. Which I, there's what no do you explanation mean? of what the bar means. <laughs> yeah, I imagine is... it's popularity, but I there's nothing that suggests that other than my gumption. There's look, it's just a bar. There is no yeah. there's no title to that bar. No, it's because it'll have the name, it has the the length of the track, and then it has that bar, and then the price for the song. So okay. that bar means I don't know. So that and then, but then Pink Pussy Trot has half of the bar. Hmm. I vote, I vote we either listen to Porn Flush, the titular song, or Everywhere. Do do Porn Flush. Porn Flush. Uh-huh. Okay, if we like Porn Flush, we can always come back to Everywhere. Yeah, we can always come back to Everywhere. My yeah. holes had my vote too. My three holes. Like right. my three sons. I hope this is good, man. I'm gonna download this and listen to it on the plane. We find somebody next to me can just barely hear it through the headphones. What is this man listening? Or he's like Robbie Breastnut. <laughs> Robbie, Breastnut. it's not Robbie. It was Robbie. I thought you said Ruby. Did I say Ruby? Yeah, Ruby Breastnut. I've already forgotten. If it's Robbie Breastnut, that's a whole new. Yeah, it was Ruby because it's R O O B I E, like a rube. Oh, she's got all kinds of. Yeah, it is. I hear. Okay, hold on. No, no, wait, wait. Is she a porn star or is she just? I mean, her name is... I mean, I don't know. What was the name? Okay, we're going Porn Flush, right? I had to look it up on YouTube because Amazon was like, you need to do this to better live me. Here's her at a recording session. Okay. You think it's going to be rap or pop? This is footage. This is footage from... Footage. Like a big foot. From Porn Flush. <laughs> no, it's just a woman in a, in a... A really trashy woman in a pink cowboy hat in front of a, in front of a mic with a... I mean, she looks a lot like what we look like right now. I am sporting my pink cowboy hat. It's a real trash lady with like red pit lipstick and a tube top. (laughs) What? This is what? This is as good as you... There's gout? <laughs> These lyrics these don't sound like words. Do you wanna suck off? Find that ass somewhere else. This is do you wanna suck off? <laughs> but, but these lyrics I mean they're words, but they don't make sense. Like that makes sense, but some of that shit she was Else. 
What is the market for this? What is the... Who... What's odd about it is it's not good music, and it's not particularly mm-hmm. tantalizing, or funny. <laughs> no. Or explicit. Exactly. Like, I don't even have anything... I, like, that wasn't even... It was just as funny. Okay, I'm just going to type in Robbie Bre- Ruby Ruby Breastnut, and I'll, I'll... See if there's a Wikipedia. Okay. Oh, my Lord. I'm kind of in shock. Ruby Breast... Nut. Nut. She's got an IMDb, Twitter. She's got a Twitter, which is at Ruby Breast Nut. No, it's not. On, she doesn't have a Wikipedia. Ruby Breast Nut is known for work on American Pie Presents, The Book of Love, 2009, House on Hooter Hill, House on Hooter, The Hill. Witches of Breastwick, too. I don't know what that is. She's and a these movie are like softcore porn. Scared topless, sexually bugged, the monster of the nudist colony, sexy wife sensations. It's all a bunch of. I, I'm sensing the theme. <laughs> House on Hooter Hill, The Breastford Wives, The Da Vinci Coed. <laughs> wow, that's a stretch. That's the best one. The Da Vinci Coed. The Hills Have Thighs. That's pretty good. <laughs> Keep reading these. I'm enjoying this. Busty Cops Go Hawaiian. <laughs> Busty Cops in the Jewel of Denial. The Gun. Lust Connection. <laughs> the Gun. Just Witches of Breastwick. But she was a, a she was the well she was the music department. That's what her credit was for all that. Oh, personal quote: "There's no clean way to sing dirty." Well said. Trademark: Moo Moo's nude music. Why are we here? Uh, yeah, what happened? Ruby breast nut. The thing about this website is sometimes it's like purely absurd stuff, uh-huh. but other times you kind of have to read into it. So, for example, there's a bar called Pure Protein. Right, uh-huh. and he's like, "Well, each bar contains protein." Con- he says, "Protein contains four calories per gram, uh-huh. which is protein." Okay, pure protein bars have two hundred calories each, and twenty grams of protein. Therefore, forty percent of the calories actually come from the pro- protein. Uh huh. So it's not pure protein. Right. Right. Like that's what his point is. That's the post. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you get that, and then you also get Ruby breast nut. Right. <laughs> you know, some of them are just like on the face odd and crazy. And otherwise it's it's that. He's like, "What? Well, hey, this is this is big phony." Like what the, what the hell is this? What what the what's like at times sometimes see that they're hiding that in a good way. But somebody I I've got a bunch of those, you know, those who knew cookies? No. They're called who knew cookies and they have like supposed to be made from like good stuff. Well, I didn't tell you, the ones I bought had, like, a serving of those cookies had, like, a full day's worth of fiber in them. And guess what? I didn't fucking know. And How many did you eat? I, like, half the goddamn box. And Dude. I shit my brains out. <laughs> like, I just had this terrible, like, intestinal disturbances for, like, 12 hours. It's like, whoa, whoa. like oh, my God, what? Like, oh, you're only you're not supposed to eat. So when they started putting that Olestra, Olestra stuff in chips, remember that? Yeah, and it would make you just, like, lose oil out your butt. Yeah, you leave greasy butt stains. The thing is, like, people make stuff that on paper or, like, if you just look at it but don't think about it, you're like, Mm -hmm. that's a good idea. But as soon as you think about it, you're like, no, it's a bad idea. Here is a pad of sticky notes uh-huh. that are the same size as your phone. So you can stick them to your phone. Uh-huh. Okay. Like you can write a note or whatever and then put it on your phone. And it's exactly the same size. And there's a hole in everything for the camera. So like... But you can make notes on your phone. You can make notes on your phone. Also, you can just put a fucking piece of paper in your pocket. You can write in your goddamn hand. You yeah. can make a voice memo. There's a lot... The also, you is- have a fucking phone. You could take a dry erase marker to the class screen... And that's a better fucking waste of your money. Yeah. It's eight ninety five for eighty sheets of that. Oh my it's like god. Ten bucks for a it's but I bet you they fucking sell. I bet somebody's like, oh, I love that. I'm always trying to take notes and use my phone. Yeah, I don't know. That seems yeah, that seems a little yeah. pointless. But somebody's buying it. Somebody somebody okayed it and someone's probably buying it. There's a lot of stuff like that, man. Like those, you know, those, like the uh, those trader magazines. What are those called? Those uh, the ones that are in like Sky Mile, the Sky High magazines, and 
Okay. They have like little steps for your dog so it can walk up onto your bed. Yeah, I get it. You know, yeah. like a giant hammock. I mean, that's okay. Yeah, big hammock. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want this? It's a coffee mug uh-huh. with a ceramic middle finger at the bottom of the class. So you drink your cup of coffee, and when you're done, it flips you off. <laughs> Who is that for? It's just some self-loathing bastard. Yeah, you're right. Fuck me. Time to write another song. It's Ruby Breast Nut. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on here. Let me, let me, let me. I saw this thing online the other night. I was looking at the menu of a place, and one of the menu items was just edible crab. <laughs> Edible crab. Edible crab. That's great. Yeah, I'm like, okay. <laughs> we make sure you'll get in the crab you can eat. <laughs> that's the, that's but, the, the tagline. Come down to Marciano's. It's a crab you can eat. <laughs> <laughs> what's funny is if you don't put edible on anything else on your menu. Yeah, you're like, well, what's this other crab? Oh, well, like, you don't want to eat. It's like it's like anything like you ever see. I think Simpsons did this joke of like you know some cereal and said now 100 percent is best is free. Oh yeah, it's like right. It wasn't before. Mm-hmm. That would be funny to, on everything on a menu, especially if it was edible. Like, edible. If everything was one. yeah. Everything was just edible, and there wasn't like a theme. It wasn't like a joke, or you know, you went as a joke. It's just like you know, edible balsamic chicken with a side of you know your choice of. Edible salad or edible fries. Would you like the edible soup? No. Edible soup of the day? I like it. The inedible. <laughs> it's a bowl of screws. Would you like our coffee that flips you off? <laughs> this place. Ruby breast nuts playing over the speaker. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me here, man. Some of the weird places that we've been to, there's like a shit themed restaurant where you uh-huh. sit on toilets. So I'm pretty sure there's one where they like lock you in jail and are mean to you while you eat. Um, we wouldn't know. I mean, because they could yell at us. We would know they were yelling at us. Well, they're dressed like wardens and the place looks like a jail. It's not a normal place where they're like, you can't leave. It's not hostage-themed restaurant. I would go. Guess what? You've got to spend the next 8 to 12 hours here. Oh, man. Is the food weird. edible? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Inedible crab. <laughs> well, remember the, that Italian restaurant we went to, and the walls were covered in like those like sexy novellas, like yes, the busty, the Bodus Ripeth, and the yep, yeah. And then they had no idea. No, I mean, I, they just uh... they. I mean, I don't think because I think they just did it to fill space, fill up space because it's like, you know, it was kind of like when you went into uh, you know like a Ruby Tuesdays or something. You know, they got it's got that theme, and they all look the same. They just have all that junk everywhere, like old bikes and license plates and stuff. This was just trying to look Italian, but they had like bookshelves, and the books were. And it was like clearly they got those somewhere because they were like a nickel, mm-hmm. you know. Because they, yeah, they they looked used. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just digging around now. I'm just digging around. I mean, really, it's a lot of like beer koozies with tits. Like who who? <laughs> that was funny when you were like eight at the first time you saw it. You go, huh, huh, and like a Spencer's Gifts. A lot of the stuff that's in Spencer's Gifts, I guess you're buying it as a joke. As a goof. Like you give it to someone. Yeah. I don't like gifts like that, really. Like, I can kind of appreciate it, but like uh-huh. if you give me something I'm just going to throw away. Yeah. Like, don't give me anything. Yeah. That's say the story about the time that we got this girl, and she, she, she was fine, but she was really, I guess maybe sheltered. Or, I don't know if that's the right word. And, like, one time we were just sitting around talking about a, a friend of ours. Uh, his dad used to always tell one of our other friends growing up, this is convoluted already, that he was going to buy him a vibrating butt plug for Christmas. Like, all the time. And when we were kids, we thought that was hilarious. And we were basically just telling that story. I started laughing. And somehow we just all started joking around. It was, like, me and my buddy and, like, her two roommates. And we're, like... All, just start joking about butt plugs for some reason like the just I don't know and she was like that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard and like we kept talking about it and she didn't she didn't know they were a real thing butt plugs or vibrating butt plugs either one uh <laughs> yeah she didn't know that the butt plug was a thing 
So, and she was probably like 24. So we like brought him up on the computer and was like, yeah, look, here there. And she's like, oh my God. And was just like completely blown away that that was even a thing. And we thought oh, it'd be really funny for her birthday to buy her a vibrating butt plug, you know? And we all thought it was funny. Yeah. And we went looking for one and we didn't actually go to a sex shop and get one, but we it was kind of last minute when we thought of that. So we're like, fuck, we'll just pop in Spencer's and see what they got. And they just have, you know, actual vibrators. So like, we'll just get her a vibrator. That'll be funny. Whatever. So we got it. And one of those stupid cards in the same place, like when you open it up, like a big dick popped out or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we thought this was really... This is exactly the situation where any of those gifts are appropriate. <laughs> yeah. Like for your dickhead friends, you're just like some sort of prudish friend just fucking with them. Or... Right. Well, it completely backfired. Well, She didn't appreciate it at all. <laughs> It was, <laughs> well, I understand it was the situation. If wow. we had given this to her at her home, like at her apartment, we went out to this really nice Indian restaurant and we go in and it was like, we're like, let's turn it on and put it in the bag before we go in. Well, what? we're like on the street, like having to be like, oh, this will be funny. You know, traffic's going by and we turn it on. You can't even hear it. And we put it in the bag. We go in. They were all there waiting on us already. Like. 15 people at this huge, we took out like a whole section of this restaurant. You guys are idiots. <laughs> you guys are idiots. And we walk in and like her roommates are there and they see us coming and we told them we were going to do it so they're, everybody's like starting to get kind of giggly just seeing us coming and I'm trying to keep a straight face because now the further into this restaurant I walk the quieter and more intimate it becomes and the louder this buzzing bag is going. Oh my God. It's going. And I'm going, oh my God. Like it's clear. Let's sound like there's a giant bumblebee in it. Holy shit. And I'm walking and I'm trying not to laugh. And I'm seeing all of them at the table. And pretty much everybody there knew about it except for her. Well, given our track record, she immediately knew, oh God, what have they done? Yeah. And she just starts. She's like, what's in the bag? What's in the bag? And starts like tearing up. Before she even knew what it was. What could it have been? Like a dead animal? I don't know. What's and in I, the bag? She was in the box. And I was like, oh God. And I, then I felt bad. Like I didn't want her to. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, but you're too late. You're too late. We're in. We, we dove in. the. We're in the pool now. Yeah. So anyway, she gets it. She looks in the bag and goes, oh. The, and she just starts going, turn it off. Turn it off. And it was a fucking disaster. So I'm like fumbling in the bag trying to turn this fucking vibrant. And then I had, I couldn't get it to take it out and in kind of a panic I pulled it out of the bag and everybody in the restaurant was looking at us now so now I'm standing over her with a vibrating dildo trying to or vibrator trying to like get it to turn off and she's just like freaking the fuck out because it's embarrassing the hell out of her dude it's embarrassing me and then this was years ago and I don't know any of these people yeah and I put this put it back in the bag and everybody's like trying not to it was like one of those things where it got so out of hand so quick that everybody's like because Everybody there really, but her, thought it was funny. And, but I get it. At the time, I remember thinking, like, come on, it's a joke, and being like, whatever. But I get it. It was... It was, it was just... Exactly. It was just the perfectly terrible situation. Right. If it and hadn't been on, I bet you it wouldn't have been a problem. No. It was the fact that we got in there, it was so quiet, and here's a bag going... Just, like, vibrating. Well, then she, like, kind of calms down, and someone said, trying to change the subject, been like... Oh, just open your card. And I was thinking, no, no, no. And it's kind of like, and I was like, uh, I was like, yeah, you'd save it. Just save it for, save it for later. And I'm like trying to like get this. When well, in the middle of this, like she's just kind of like, yeah. And gets the card trying to change the thing, opens the card and a giant dick pops out. And then she's like, ah, and it just made it. It was so, the rest of that dinner was so goddamn awkward. Did it ever recover? No, not entirely. Like, she was never the same towards us. Oh, my God. And because it just, yeah. Tell me that story. Tell me that story where you, you, maybe we've told this in the podcast before, but I can't remember all the moving parts. But you somehow stole the key to someone's house. Like, they let you babysit and you, like, kept it. Yeah. Mm Mm-mm. Don't let me fucking babysit. Not babysit, house sit or something. <laughs> no, it wasn't even that. You just stole their house. Yeah, this was just in... We were in high school, and it was... Uh, this is the exact... Because the same Nathan who decided to throw it in the bag, it'll be funny, is the same Nathan who decided to do this, is my point. It's like, this is what uh, made me think of it. It's like, I understand your thought process, but anyone else would go, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And I guess that's why she got so panicky at the restaurant, being like, oh God... 
But it was me and uh, Chach, friend, friend of the, the show. show. And there was some kind of... Uh, somebody was having a party or something when we were in high school. Sure. And we went over to their house. And this girl that we knew, uh, really good friends with her, and she was... Her parents were out of town, like on vacation or somewhere, like all week. And they were supposed to be out of town until like through the weekend. Was at the beach or something, this giant storm came and they ended up just coming home early. We didn't know that. So a month or two before, sometime in, way before this, I saw an extra house key laying in her room and I swiped it because I thought this could come in handy. This will be funny. Who has that thought? <laughs> Who sees something like that and goes, man? I mean, I wasn't going to use it for evil. No, right. Evil people do have that thought. Yeah. But I was just like, this will be funny. Because, like, we were good friends. And we would always, like, pray, play jokes on each other and stuff. Like, we stole her car once and, like, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we killed her dog one time. <laughs> yeah, we drowned her puppies. We, <laughs> no, that would be evil. This is just, you know. It's just, stole her house key. This is just, but it's hijinks. Okay. Anyway, so I, I swiped that and I had it for her. And I remember her asking me, like, did you guys take... My extra key. She she knew, but she knew enough. Yeah, to... she knew it. And I was like, no. And I adamantly we denied it for so nothing happened for so long because I literally kept it for like I don't know a long time, and that's when it presented itself. So me and Chach were like, okay, we're going to go to this party, and she's like, yeah, it's like I'm already over here. I'm like, I got her house keys. Like her parents aren't home. She's over at this party. Let's swing by her house. We'll go in. Trash the place, make it look like someone broke in and robbed her. So then, when she comes home later after this party, she'll come in and like freak out. We're like, okay, that's a good idea. So we just went to her house, let ourselves in with the key. We went through, and we gently, we didn't actually ransack the house. Do you remember when I accused you of having stolen my headphones? Yeah. And you said, no, man, I don't think stuff like that's funny. Yeah. Well, that's different. That's something you use every day. No, right. I don't. I wasn't accusing you. First of all, uh, I used the word "accuse." It was. I just like, hey man, have you seen those? Yeah. But breaking into someone's house and making them think that it was it was rotten. You were that's robbed. not nearly as shitty as stealing somebody's headphones. <laughs> if you take somebody's headphones, you're like, God damn it! I'm getting ready to go to work. Like, I want to listen to something on the train. Oh dear the God! Fuck? There's been a stranger in my home. And yeah, but that's not really putting you out much. It would be it's scarier than <laughs> right. Where are my headphones? Yeah, but it's not as annoying. <laughs> <laughs> In anyway, okay, yeah, yeah. So we come on. We gently ransack the place. Like we take everything out and like lay it down. But if at first glance it just looks like someone came in and threw everything out. But we went through like in her room and threw all of her clothes around. Went into her parents' room and threw all their clothes around. Like everything we left, and we go to the this party. I think anything of it. Well, a couple hours later, she gets a call, and it's her parents. They came home early, and she's like, "What? What?" And she's like, "Talking to her, like, oh my god." She's like, "Seriously, whatever." And then she's like, "Uh, I think she asked me." She goes, "Did you guys do anything?" That was the time to say yes. And we doubled down and said, "Absolutely not." Oh my god, and dude! She, I know how this story goes. And it's like she gets like, "No," and. We think, still think it's funny. I was like, well, what's going on? We didn't realize she was talking to her parents. And we thought maybe her grandma saw us pull into the driveway because she lived right next door. We think thinking something like that. So finally she hangs up the phone and she goes, apparently someone broke into our house. She's like, well, they're calling the police. It's like someone came and like broke in our house. Like the door was open and everything. Turned out that was what they were most mad about is that we left the front door open. But, <laughs> but anyway, they said. But you did that to make it seem like a robbery, right? Right. Yeah, that's what we said. We were going for legitimacy. And they were like, well, somebody could have actually came in and robbed us. Anyway, they they were going to call the police. And like me and Josh got this look. We're like, shit, man, we got we to gotta fess up. And you, then right at the last minute, we're like, listen, it, it was us. It was us. We, we went in. But I didn't want to give up my key. So I didn't want to give up the key. So what I told him that we did. Why would you this? You're this far in, and you're she, still trying. She's to like, it that. was the key. You, I knew. She goes, I knew you took that key. I knew you took. And I was like, no, I didn't. I didn't take. I didn't take. Because she had to call her parents back really quick. Be like, no, it was it was Nathan and Matt. Like they didn't. No one broke in. Oh so my she's God. like, we have to go there right now. They're pissed. Yeah, of course, you, you've got to clean the house. And we're like, yeah, right. But we will. 
we thought we would kind of show up once again, like a couple of knuckleheads, show up giggling and laughing like, <laughs> thinking they're going to think it's funny. They did not think it was funny that we invaded the shit out of their privacy. And I no. get it. Listen, I get it now. <laughs> I get it now. It's like the, the comedian said, I know, I'm in the future too. Right, right, right. But I'm like fucking 17 and just thought, you think I'm a truckle fuck now? <laughs> Like, it was like, I didn't, I didn't even know there was a speed limit until I was like 20. <laughs> like, they were, <laughs> I was like, if the van makes it around the curve, it's fine. This thing's a piece of shit. So we were, <laughs> then we should go, and they just stand in silence while we spend like the next hour and a half cleaning their house back up. And I was like, oh shit, they're normally pretty jovial people, and they are not having it. And apparently it was just all, once again... I don't know if there's any real good timing for that sort of thing, but it was bad timing because they were they were pissed because their vacation got ruined too. Yeah, so yeah, they were yeah. like just in a bad mood, and then they come home and got to deal with this right off. <laughs> and they kept insisting that I give the key back, and I was like, I don't have a key. And they were like, Pam's like, I know. Listen, she was like, I know it's missing. I know it's missing. I know you took it. You've got to give it back. And I was like, I didn't. Like we, they always left their garage door open. Why are you? down because why did you double down and then double down again you lunatic because that went so well <laughs> i mean i'm thinking like we you never know once you've got it you don't want to give up your one fucking ace in your sleeve you've still what got did you the... do to these people that they, they don't deserve this that's true they don't deserve you to like lord them like, i am the key master <laughs> I burned a bunch of spam there one time, too. It just ruined the smell of the house for, like, six months. What? Is... We don't like that Nathan boy keep having over the house. <laughs> What's funny is her dad cut my hair growing up, and I was always... It was so awkward after some of those things. It's like, he's going to fuck my head up, and I deserve it. Like, and he didn't. He always did a fine job. But I just knew one day I was going to come in, and he was going to be like, whoops, and just, like, shave my head. You know? Eyebrow, get an eyebrow. Yeah. Well, that's real funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a joke. I just cut your eyebrows off. It's give all the fucking key. Give me the next one's fucking, your finger. Yeah, give me the fucking key. <laughs> so, did you ever get the key back? I, eventually, but not then. Oh I still, God. I don't remember how I ended up giving it back. For some reason, I think I used it for leverage for something else. I'll give you your house key back if we do this. You're a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. I would never fuck with someone else's parents. Well, the the, the, the no. I would have ne- Here's the thing. But her parents asked you for the key. Yeah, I think. I and honestly don't remember. Sure. It was in a group situation. I and Pam was asking. She was asking. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm plead the fifth. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The I'm trying to think of the most like mischievous thing I've ever done. <laughs> I read something on the, on the internet the other day. You never read something on the internet. Like usually when you read something on the internet and it's funny, you go. Yeah. Right, like that's and that's if it's really funny. I saw something the other day. I remember go, ha! I do that every now and then. Yeah. It was, it was. What's the most mischievous thing you've ever gotten up to as a kid? And the top comment was, we were playing ding dong ditch, but instead of running away, when they answered the door, we threw a dead bird at them. <laughs> Jokes on you yeah. for answering your door, you idiot. There's a dead foul. That's really funny. <laughs> what the shit I got hit with a dead bird? <laughs> Where did they get the bird? Yeah. And they Who made, had a dead bird? They made it seem like they did it multiple times. Yeah, was it the same bird? <laughs> same person. Yeah, where they get this? So either they had a cat or one of them. You need to keep an eye on one of them guys. That would be, no one would appreciate this. The people doing it would appreciate it, but the person getting it done too. I feel like if anyone would, it would be us mm-hmm. on some degree. We would have to kind of remove ourselves from the situation. But imagine that you and I settle down, right? Mm-hmm. I make an honest man out of you. We're living in the Midwest somewhere, mm-hmm. right? We got a white picket fence. Right. We just got a, just a fucking neighborhood. One of them. Mm-hmm. Well, they end up a cul-de-sac. Yeah. And the fucking neighborhood boys keep ringing the bell and throwing dead birds at you. <laughs> uh-huh. And he keeps riling you up. But they do it. Without fail. Like, they wait enough that you don't expect them it's to them, do it again. And then you open yeah. the door and they throw another dead bird at you. Oh, it's like, like a month later. Yeah. Right. God damn it. Would that be so funny? If they have, first of all, <laughs> the balls. You're a big dude. <laughs> right? Keep, you keep throwing birds on. I would chase the kids. If they threw a dead bird at me, I would chase them. You would have to do, well, our, our friend, uh, Gary, 
Remember how he, I imagine this is how I'd retaliate. So I'm like, he made that shit slurry. Oh, these kids were jumping. They would get out home, they would get home off the bus and they would take a shortcut. And like dive through his hedges. They'd like just fucking dive through them. And they were fucking them up. They completely ruined. Like they kept, they were killing the bush. Yeah. And just to like, you know, not have to walk another 12 feet. Yeah, it was ridiculous. So. And he asked them to stop. He was reasonable at first. Yeah. So <laughs> instead, when they kept doing it, they basically told him to fuck <laughs> off. But you don't do to Gary. He made a, it's in his own words, a shit slurry that contained pig shit, dog shit, and what, cat shit, or chicken shit, something. I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't also his shit. Yeah, I would, I would not surprise me at all if he mixed his own shit into that slurry. And then he dumped it all in that bush. <laughs> and then the next day they got off the bus, and of course, he's like, without fail, they jumped through that bush, and then they're just all covered in pig shit. That's great. Didn't he said that their parents got mad at him? Too. Yeah, so they got really mad because and he was like, "What? Yeah, don't you're, fucking jump through my bush." Yeah, I'm my, goddamn Gary. I can put shit in my own bush. Don't go through the bush. <laughs> I can put shit in my own bush. <laughs> Gary Jackson. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, you putting shit in their bushes? You don't do that. What's well, like? Now I want to clear the air. When we ransack that house. <laughs> At no point was her parents meant to be involved. No, you're right. It was, going to, be, it it was going to be a joke. She was going to come home. She was going to freak out a bit and we we're going to help her clean it up. But the stakes, the stakes of breaking into someone else's house. I agree. Those are high stakes. Uh huh. But it wasn't high stakes when it was just all us kids. It's when the parents got involved that they even started talking stakes. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where you just race your car down the highway with your friends. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. boom, somebody hits the wall. Exactly. You're like, oh, but then it's, you know. That's another thing. I got, we were racing, well, not necessarily racing. I used to have, the first vehicle I ever had was a big van. Yeah. That was made the same year I was born. Nice. <laughs> and anytime the speed, that's why I said I never paid attention to the speed limit, because anything over a certain mile an hour, like 45 or something, the speedometer just wiggled backwards and forth. You didn't know how fast you were going. <laughs> And the numbers 55 miles per hour were in bright orange. So, like, it was like if you hit that, it's like when the flux capacitor kicked in or something. But we were driving down. And it's one of the things that just kind of started. My buddy was riding, oh, it was Chach. He was riding in his car, and I was in mine on this two lane highway, and there's a giant hill that goes down. And as we start driving down, like, I was already going super fast, and he blasts around me trying to pass me. So, it just immediately turned into like a race. So as we're going, I managed to get ahead of him just a bit, right as we start hitting towards the bottom of that hill. And the only thing I could think of to make me win was I reached into this big, there's a pouch in the front of the van. Like, the, this one was kind of almost like snub-nosed, kind of. <laughs> and there was like a big pouch there. And I always kept changing it for like toll booth, just extra change. So I reached in and started throwing handfuls of pennies and nickels and shit out and hitting his windshield. And he got so fucking pissed because it fucked his... And I, and I didn't even think. I just thought, this is going to make me win because he's going to be like, oh, shit, what the fuck? Then we get out and he was so mad and I was so surprised that he was mad. He was like, <gasps> he was like, what the fuck? What are you doing? Throwing? What was that? And I was like, nickels and stuff. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I won. <laughs> You're just mad I won. You're just mad that I'm fucking, I'm fucking dingo lightning. <laughs> Another time I got mad, I got in trouble, was... I lit a smoke bomb, and our buddy was sitting. He was he was sitting in his car in the driver's seat, and I'd gotten out and walked around, and he was doing something with his wallet. But he had. had the, I love that you guys driving and you also having smoke bombs are they overlap? Because for me, those periods of my life are distinct. If I had smoke bombs now, I would have smoke bombs. I know, in my and I was pocket. actually just thinking, now I'm going to buy some smoke bombs. I want smoke bombs. <laughs> I'd like smoke bombs and stink bombs. I would have them in my pockets now. The, <laughs> just a grown man walking around with smoke bombs. There's got to be a place, man. Let's go find a magic shop. Oh, a magic shop. Guaranteed to get fireworks here. I always hear them popping off. Yeah, people popping. Yeah. And look. Anyway, he was sitting with his feet. Both his feet were outside of the car. Yeah. And the car door was open. He was sitting there getting ready to get out, and he was doing something with his wallet. Well, I was kind of standing behind the door, and I was like, this will be a perfect opportunity. I'll light the smoke bomb and roll it under his car, and it's going to start smoking. We'll be like, oh, shit, what's wrong with your car? <laughs> well, I did. <laughs> Instead, it was an M80. <laughs> so, but I, I lit it, 
rolled it under his car when smoke started coming out. I screamed and started freaking out. I was like, oh, fucking shit, the car's on fire! Well, he instinctually freaked out and just jumped up and slammed the car door and locked his keys and wallet in the car door. <laughs> and we were somewhere like an hour from our home. And we had to go. This was in the days before fucking cell phones. I would have been so mad at you. He was mad. Yeah, he was mad at me and I didn't understand that. I was like, I didn't close the door. I was like, what was it? He goes, I had it all locked up. Everything was ready. And he was so mad at me. And I was like, hey, what? That's not really on me. Like, you're the one who closed the door. Yeah. I, <laughs> I guess. But the thing was, he didn't have a cell phone or no cell phones. So we had to go find a fucking pay phone in like a mall. And he had to end up picking up the change off the street that you threw at him. <laughs> oh, it was a different time. But he was... Re- <laughs> anyway, it turned into a bit. We had the, got stuck at this fucking strip mall for like three and a half hours, four hours. The best hours. thing we ever did with fireworks is we bought... They had a sale because the only thing you can really buy in Connecticut is sparklers. Oh. And then it was right after. It was like a week after 4th of July. Mm-hmm. And they were just trying to get rid of them. So it was like a box. It was like a nickel or something. Yeah. So we bought like $80 worth of sparklers, sparklers which was like... A, th- a couple thousand of them uh-huh. and we duct taped them all together we put them in all into one big thing and it was like maybe like the size of like an old Folgers can you know those uh-huh. like big fucking ones you can get at Costco yeah, yeah. It was, and it was just jammed it roll. was just sparklers and we duct taped it so tightly that it, like it well when we, we then we put one out the top for as a fuse uh-huh. and we put it in my my buddy's front lawn and we lit it and when we did that my buddy Scott is like a four-way intersection, but it's like a really slow road. Mm-hmm. It, it, the, the place, remember I was staying when you came to visit me? Yeah. That place. Remember that? There's like uh-huh. a four-way right there, but it's not really an intersection. Right. So this van pulls up, and he sees you were kind of fucking around, so he stops. And when the sparkler hits the rest of the sparklers, it shoots like an 18-foot flame. <laughs> because of the way that we had so much duct tape that it couldn't go anywhere else but up. And the van... Peeled out like, ah, and peeled out and like shot away, and it just like, whoosh, and we it was underneath a tree because we had, but the tree was a big fucking tree. We had no like, idea it was ever going to shoot a flame that high, right? And it was just like, whoosh, and it burned for like a solid like minute. I'm like holy shit, didn't think it was going to do that. Uh huh. It's crazy. I mean, that's the only ever real hijinks we ever got up to with fireworks, yeah. or really any hijinks really. When shit like that goes bad with fire, man, it's never good. Like, the first time I went, we all of us burnt a giant tire, we had no idea how big the fire gets off of a fucking tire. How'd you get it on a fire? How did you burn a tire? You just throw it in a fire. You you make a fire and throw a tire on it. <laughs> That's not enough. <laughs> For some reason, I, I, I thought you got a tire to combust, is what I understood. What do you mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you, you've confused me. Because of, it's like, that's as simple as it gets. You just catch a tire on fire. But once, tire, fire, fire, they run. We had like a campfire and like some tents and stuff set up. Yeah. And they were all back from the fire, reasonable distance. And we threw a big tire on it. And it, the thing is, is what gets you is it takes it a few minutes. It takes it a while to like get going. But when it does, it's like it, it goes up. And the heat that came off that was like melting the front of the tents. And we're like, oh, like you couldn't get anywhere near it. It was so intense. <laughs> oh, it was like, oh, shit. The end. But imagine it's not good to breathe. It's not good to be around. No, you shouldn't breathe it. Yeah, same way, but it burned so high it, it killed the tree. That it withstood m- many years of campfires. Where did you get it? Where did you get it? Where, where, where it was you already out there. I think it was like a tire swing and the rope got old and broke. I remember my buddy, <laughs> he had a bunch of like black mold in his basement. And these big boxes of just books that got wet. Uh-huh. And, and we couldn't, we were like, oh, they're full of mold. So we just made a big fire in, in a in a... Like steel barrel, we're just burning the books, and we invited a bunch of people on Facebook. But someone who didn't like, first of all, it's like you know when I, you and I are pretty chuckle fucky, but every now and then we'll do something chuckle fucky. But someone doesn't take it; they take us exactly at face value, right? And it's like, look at our track record. Yeah, like look at everything else we've done. Like, please, please don't don't take me seriously. Yeah, you know, Clearly give me the joking. benefit of the doubt. Yeah, and they got so mad at us for book burning. I'm like they're full of mold. They're right. in these basement. They're wet. No one's gonna read these books. Yeah, like we're just because yeah, there's a point when stuff like that it's gross and it can be dangerous to even be around. Yeah, like I guess we could have just put it in the landfill, but then we didn't, it would have been it's not as fun as burning them. Yeah, that's what we figured. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it was kind of an event, you know. Like, hey man, you got some old books? Bring them by. You know, you yeah. got you got some uh, books on. You got some what, some some Charles Darwin, some bullshit. Bring it out by. We'll burn that up. <laughs> burn it up. 
burn it up. Remember what them Game of Thrones? Yeah. Some but I get, uh, but under, yeah, but I, I could see, like you said, but some just some passers by just sees a bunch of kids burning books. They're gonna be like, "What the fuck?" No, it was someone on Facebook who knew us is what who gave us. Oh, shit. oh, you know? Yeah, clearly. Yeah, like if you told me you're doing that, I'd be like, "Why?" Oh, like, they're oh, all they're, mold. They're all mold. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, it was funny. The mold made it. I mean, like it. I mean, they were just completely ruined, and we would like open them and try to read them, and they, they were yeah. all the moldy pages. and gross. Yeah, and it was also a whole bunch of weird books. It wasn't like any. It wasn't anything like it was like you know every now and then it'd be like the Odyssey or something, and we would burn the Odyssey. Like yeah, fuck you. <laughs> and it was fun. It was just a, it was a good time. That book burn was one of the best <laughs> book burns I ever been to. Oh, uh, oh, uh, I, uh, I, I. This has nothing to do with anything, but it made me think of this one time. <laughs> this is literally nothing to do with anything we're talking about. <laughs> I was, I was, I came home to my house. And a plumber was working there, a carpenter or something. Did you hire him? Yes. Yeah. Okay. My family did. Okay. I was little. I was young. He I was did. young, young, but I was like maybe 15. Yeah. And I walked up to the house, and I'm pretty sure no one was home. I think it was the first one who got there, and he was working in the house. They must have given him a key or something. And he goes, hello, you must be son of Roy. <laughs> and then we both had a moment, and he goes, I recognize that was an odd thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I, I am son of Roy. And he's like, good, good. Yeah, I did interesting. That's weird. <laughs> you know, I was like, all right, man. But I was like, yeah. First of all, weird. Second of all, great. Like, yeah. you gave me, hey, man, thanks for the story yeah. that I'm telling <laughs> damn 10 years later <laughs> in Taiwan. We had, I had an interesting run in with a, there was a guy, same way, doing some work for my dad. He was like doing drywall or doing, you know, something. We're kids, we had, me and my brother both had like art desks. In this room, and I'd drawn like a picture of I don't know, he's always just draw out of comic books. And I drew like a picture of like I don't know what it was, like Wonder Woman or something. I just drew out of this I don't know, just some like sexy comic book lady, sure. So I drew this picture that was laying out there, and I inked it. And he went there to do this work, and I came out there, and he goes, This is a grown man, <laughs> and I'm like 14. And he's like, You uh. You draw that picture of that woman there? I said, yeah. He goes, buddy, I tell you, if I could draw like that, I would never leave the house. And I thought, you're a strange individual. And I <laughs> and I just walked out. I was like, I was going to come out here and draw, but I don't want to be out here with you. <laughs> that just, uh, no, buddy. He said it to me like we were both just old drinking buddies. That's the weirdest thing when people just bring you to their weird level. <laughs> like, yeah, this guy's going to know what I'm talking about. Yeah. He's 14. He probably jerks it. He's 14. He knows everything. But I was like, well, I'm not drawing pictures of superhero women and masturbating through them. That's not what's happening here. I remember I was like, oh. when I was really young, I had no access. I don't think I had a computer. Mm-hmm. You know, I had no, I had just no access to porn. Yeah. Right. I had to go look for mine in the woods. Yeah. Which you still think is weird, but that's the thing. Yeah, other never. people, write in, please. Yeah, Give no, us more other tales. People, other people have told me that that's the thing, and I, I've just never, I've never. You, young boys go find porn in the woods. Some There's some man who leaves it out there. <laughs> the porn fairy. Basically. Which we decided was Bigfoot, if you remember. <laughs> what was my point? Oh, I had no access to that. But I remember, the, oh, I had, I mean, you know. You draw, so mm-hmm. like sometimes just things stick in your head, and you can recreate it, mm-hmm. right? But the only thing I had in my head that was of any smut was the diagram, because we had got like the like the sex talk at school uh-huh. was like the diagram, basically like you know if you were in a gynecology gyneco- yeah. gynecological doctor's office, right. and you know like the poster he would have, yeah, yeah. Of like the reproductive system, right? But it might even, but it might have like kind of like a crude, like you know, like a silhouette of a woman with her legs open, uh-huh. and then it would have like the reproduction system, right? That's all I had. That's uh-huh. all that was up there for little Sam. <laughs> so he was like, "Well, that's what I'm drawing," and I drew it, <laughs> and it was too clinical. <laughs> I was like, "Now that's nothing," and I had to burn it because if anyone had found that, they'd be like, "What the fuck? <laughs> What's he doing? That's a weirdly clinical drawing that Sam has done." <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny if then I labeled it with nonsense, like just names of superheroes. Sperm. <laughs> Grebnerp. Grey Castle. <laughs> huh. This is the snarf. Yeah, that's snarf. This is Grey Skull. That's Grey Skull is what I want oh, to okay. say. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
That's weird, the things that you do when you're young. Yep. Yeah, I remember, like, on the quest to, to try to figure out, like... Because, you know, your dick starts getting hard, and, you know, you get those hormones and stuff. And like, but you... But really... You start writing, whack me, smack me off. <laughs> exactly. You, you know got, what? I think I think old... Uh, Ruby Breastnut? R- Ruby Breastnut. I don't think she ever grew out of that. No, she just uh, is that now. I think she's still trying to figure it all out. <laughs> she just has clinical diagrams in her head, and it's... She's worked on a bunch of smutty movies, but she doesn't. She knows that vibrating butt plugs are a thing. She does. You know, there's like a on, on Sirius XM. There's like a, a a porn channel where you like listen. I guess Howard Stern, Stern does this. Stern Howard Stern does this too, where he just has like playmates talk to each other mm-hmm. and like ask them dirty questions. Mm-hmm. Who is that for? Ah. It does nothing for me. Yeah, my like, dude, that's just a lady talking. Yeah, you know. I remember. Yeah, when, they do. He does that all. I, I mean, I don't listen to a lot of, but I know anytime I see clips or something, it's genuinely, gen, like that, or they have him get on like a Sibian or something like that, like on the radio. And it's like, all right, you just driving your car to work. Yeah. Listen to that. Listen to someone. That's like I remember my dad had got there's some guy at work. He had to fire, and he had the first year like to prove it. So my dad stayed home and monitored the guy's computer all day, and then when he started looking at porn my dad like recorded it and then used it as evidence to fire him and it was like a whole thing uh, and what the okay. guy was just jerking out at work ooh okay I was completely different I understood that as there was a guy who had a fire at his what? home and he wasn't able to come into work and your dad somehow was able to monitor his home computer which he claimed was burn up in a fire, and then he saw him get on and start looking at porn and realized he was full of shit and fired him for not coming into work. That's what I was thinking. I was like, how does your dad have access to this guy's computer? How did you get... I said, oh, fire, but you just... Okay, you went on a journey. Yeah, I did pay no, attention for a fire. nanosecond. <laughs> yeah. No, that makes total... I got yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. But I remember asking him, my dad, I remember being like, who can't keep their composure? <laughs> For a couple hours. Right. Who are these people? I mean, I guess I mean, it's how, a hormone imbalance or I something. Guess, how boring is his work? I mean, was he really bored? Did he have there's any... shit to do. No, he had shit okay, to do. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, it's not like... A, I mean, I Then there's be, no excuse. If you're a security officer or you're a long-haul drucker, <laughs> I imagine these guys are probably jerking it off on the, on the road. That's probably Some happens. road jerking. That's gotta happen. Yeah. Yeah, if you're a long-haul trucker. <laughs> I know, I did say that strangely. <laughs> That's a job to have, man. And there's sex weirdos out there, man. Oh, well, I used to work at the toll, the toll booth. And there's sex weirdos would come through there. Uh, when I worked the, the night shift, man, you start getting 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, people just come through completely naked. I'm like, what? How? You clearly didn't forget to put on clothes. <laughs> They've got shoes and fucking socks on up to there. You can see the socks. Just naked. Mostly dudes. Every now and then you'd have a, a lady come through, but it was just, and you could tell they weren't doing it as like a joke. Like it wasn't kind of like, like what'd you do last night? <laughs> I did that thing where I drive through all the toll booths naked. Oh, far out! That's awesome. You know, it was like no one knew about that. You could some people gave you the vibe. You know, just like oh, that this guy's getting off on this. You know, just like weird weirdos. Just weird sex weirdos. Just sex weirdos. <laughs> sex weirdos. Well, that's going to do it for us <laughs> yeah. on this episode of the Royal We. Yeah. It's a deep dig down memory lane and sex weirdo lane. Sex weirdo lane. It's, it's illegal to drive a car naked. Is it? I don't. I think it's like public nudity. I don't think that they frown on that in most places in the public states. Nudity? Yeah, I don't think you can just walk around naked in all places. I'm saying it's illegal. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I imagine, do you think you'll go to jail? I mean, I imagine the officer would be like, put your clothes I think it's in decent exposure like, ticket like, whatever or whatever. Do. It depends on who sees you. Yeah. Like, if you're just on the highway at night, I bet you the guy would be like, the officer would be like, hey, what are you doing? Why are you naked? Yeah. I need this. But I was, I was going for a naked drive. I, I didn't realize it was a toll road. Officer, I need this. But even then, like if that was a thing, if you wanted to go for a naked drive, step out of the car, you know, and, and then there's a dildo in but, the seat, like mounted into the seat. <laughs> oh man, yeah. But if you were going through, and your thing was you just wanted to go for a naked drive, and it wasn't out to be like 
an exhibitionist sort of thing, and you saw a fucking toll booth coming, first of all, there's a place where you can turn around before the toll booth. And second of all, there's... Pull off. Yeah, or you take a fucking, you know, Slurpee cup and stick it in your crotch. Just something. Be like, ah. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> One of them nights. <laughs> what are you going to do? Gamble up, my gambler. <laughs> On the road nowhere. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that a train, the train bound for nowhere. Lost which, my pants. We're trying to get this out of here. Yeah, let's get it out of here. Let's get it all out. Or just about to go into Kenny Rogers again. This is the Royal We, <laughs> and we're almost done. In this decade, I want to thank Kishibashi for letting us use his song intro slash pathos pathos of his album One Fifty One A. Thank you, Kishibashi. I also want to thank no one, because none of you sent me headlines this week. <laughs> if you'd like to send us a headline, and you should, that's at Royal WeCast, Twitter, or at Gmail, and that's RoyalWeCast at gmail.com. Committed to that. 